Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about a really tricky concept, uh, the concept of race. We're going to try to figure out what exactly race is and how we can think about race sociologically. Um, so we're going to really be diving into how exactly sociologists understand the concept of race and how we can then use that concept to make sense of, uh, of racism and, and all kinds of racial inequalities that we see in the world around us. So the concept of race, uh, what, what exactly do sociologists mean by race? What exactly is race? Uh, and we can kind of distinguish between two components of race. One is the physical component of race, where uh, we're thinking about how it is that societies group together people who are considered in some way physically distinct from each other. Now, the most common way that we do this around race in the U.S., is to mark off skin tone or skin color uh, as the, the sort of physical marker of race. Um, but that's actually quite slippery, it turns out, uh, in terms of thinking about race. And this is in no small part because race is, in fact, a, a, a social construct. There is a social component to understanding what race is. Uh, so when we think about race, around this social component, what we're talking and thinking about is a group of people who are generally considered to be distinctive, uh, by, both by themselves um, and by others around them, that are marked off as a distinctive kind of group. Again, using typically those physical components as a way to mark off what that distinction is or where that distinction is. So though we tend to think about race around its physical component and then connect it back to biology in some way, to think it's sort of intrinsic to our biological makeup, that it's in our DNA or something like that. In fact, race is not at all in our DNA. And it, and it actually has uh, the social component is much more fundamental to the concept of race. So we're going to be focused in on how to understand that social component of race. So race is socially constructed. What, what sociologists mean when we say that race is social, socially constructed is that the categories we use are socially invented. That, that is the boundaries around what marks off someone as in one racial group or another that marks someone off as white or black um, is really a, a product uh, uh, of our of our social environment that we are socially constructing that reality those categories uh, don't exist in nature somewhere they are actually invented within society itself <coughs> excuse me uh, and the meanings what it means to be black or white uh, 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 or inside of some particular racial group um, and the difference that we make about being in one group or another, all of that is socially invented as well. Those are socially produced. That is a part of our socially constructed reality. Again, they don't exist in nature. We're producing them socially. So those physical attributes of race, those distinctions we make around physical characteristics like skin tone or hair texture, are only meaningful in a particular social context. Race is meaningless as a biological concept. And in fact, geneticists and biologists understand and know this. Race is meaningless as a purely biological concept. For race, those physical markers to become meaningful, they have to be situated in a social context that makes them meaningful. That is, those physical differences have to become made meaningful to people in interactions and in daily life. Physical differences in and of themselves have no relationship and do not create social differences. It's how we understand those physical differences that matters. All right, so I'm going to give you three pieces of evidence for understanding how exactly sociologists see race as socially constructed. Um, so this is sort of like saying, okay, we have a proposition on the table. We have a hypothesis. Race is a social construction. What kind of evidence do we have? What kind of empirical evidence do we have that could lead us to confirm that hypothesis, to believe that race is socially constructed? 
So I'm going to offer up three pieces of evidence here, and then we're going to thread them through um, an example to see how it is that exactly that, that each of these pieces work. Okay, so, so the first piece of evidence is that historically speaking, before slavery, uh, the transatlantic slave trade, before slavery gets created in a particular way within the U.S., uh, race doesn't exist as a concept. That is to say, race is a thoroughly modern concept that is bound up with the creation of slavery. If you go backwards uh, into, for example, ancient Rome, uh, slavery exists, uh, to be sure, uh, and people do talk about different groups as different from one another, but the connection between uh, physical distinctiveness, the physical component of what we call race, uh, and, and social difference just doesn't exist. There is no concept of race as we understand it today that exists in the ancient world or that exists really before modernity and before the transatlantic slave trade. So if you go back historically, you cannot trace our understanding of race, our conceptualization of race back to any date prior to uh, uh, the transatlantic slave trade. Now if race was a fundamental thing, if it was a part of nature, it would have been it would be part of all of our societies historically, but it's not. And this suggests to us that race is something that we have invented, that we have con constructed and produced as, a, as an invention within our social reality. So that's point number one. That's evidence, uh, piece of evidence number one. What other evidence can we find? <clears throat> Another piece of evidence to look at is that if you look at how scientists, and there was a hole in the, in the uh, 19th, in the 18th and 19th century, a whole emergence of this sort of race, racializing science or race science that emerges. And if you look at what categories scientists have tried to develop over time, there is no coherence and no meaningful way to talk about what categories there are that exist scientifically. And you get uh, all kinds of schema uh, over the last uh, few hundred years of doing race science, uh, you get all kinds of schemas from there being as few as three racial groups uh, in the human population and as much as a hundred or more racial groups in, in the human population. So there is no scientific uh, agreement and in fact in modern societies there is no agreement uh, amongst ourselves about how many racial groups actually exist. So we have no real scientific basis uh, for understanding what these categories are uh, in a purely biological sense. Uh, that is, uh, uh, depending on what area you're looking at, scientists will find anywhere from three to hundreds of racial categories to divide up the human population. You would think that if race was a real biological phenomenon, scientists would have converged by now onto an understanding of those categories, but this is not the case. And then finally, uh, uh, racial boundaries turn out to be quite fluid. They depend on a historical and cultural context, such that you can move from one social setting to another and your racial classification can change. You can move from one society to another and you, you can, your actual racial classification can change. And over a period of time as well, that is how people understand what racial group you're in uh, can change over time. There is this phenomenon that some of you may be aware of, of what's known as passing, uh, where African Americans who had a light enough complexion uh, 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 in the uh, slavery and immediate slave, slavery context, post-slavery context, could in some social settings pass as white. That is effectively their racial classification can change depending on the social setting that they're in. And we have actually modern examples of this uh, as well. Um, all right, so these are three pieces of evidence uh, to, to, that we can use to confirm our hypothesis that race is a social construction. And what I wanna do in the remaining minute or so that I have um, is to use the US Census and the evolution of the US Census to see all three of these things happening. Uh, so it turns out that the census form that we get, uh, uh, that we've gotten more recently, 
has a box for race, and that box looks very differently than it does. The classification schema looks very differently today than it did at the origin. So let's walk through what those, those classifications look like. So in 1790, the first census uh, in the United States, um, these were the racial classifications that existed. Uh, that is to say, this is what you could mark yourself off as um, when counting yourself on the census. You could either be a free white male, a free white female, all other free persons, or slaves. Now, I want you to stop and pause and see the way here that slavery, the construct of slavery, the institution of slavery, is bound up with the creation of racial categories. Slavery and race are linked together here in the construction of uh, of of class the the racial classification scheme in the very first census, right? So this is showing us how it is that slavery and the concept of race are so intrinsically related to one another. Now let's fast forward almost a hundred years. We get a new set of class of racial classifications in 1870: white, black, mulatto, which is an invented term to distinct to sort of talk about someone who has. Uh, both white and black ancestry, and then Indian or Native American. Um, and, and, and so I'll talk about that last one in just a moment. But here you can see what has happened is that the classification scheme has very clearly changed. That is to say, the categories we see have evolved over time, right? Remember how there's no agreement on those categories um, scientifically. There's no agreement on those categories in the census as well. These are evol now evolving constructs. And so uh, over time, uh, who is in what category can in fact shift? An Indian gets, ca gets categorized here in the context of, of political processes like manifest destiny that seek to then mark off this distinctive racial group we're going to call Indian. These explode in the 1890 census where they're trying to mark off people as more or less black, right? Um, to take the, the white category that we're going to treat as some sort of a pure category and then make a black category, which is three-fifths or more of quote-unquote black blood, they mean something like ancestry here, um, uh, would mark you as clearly in the black category, and then various distinctions to mark you as relatively close or not to the black category, depending on what your ancestry is. And then we see Indian and then Chinese and Japanese get added into this classification. This is a moment of Chinese immigration and intense backlash to, uh, to those Chinese workers who are seen as taking white jobs, right? So now we see this is, again, exploding what categories uh, we have. And then we get this massive census and the capacity in 2010 to then mark off different of these, cat being in different of these categories. So you can mark off multiple categories uh, 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 to self-classify in the 2010 census. We can even go across countries to look at the Brazilian census in 2000 where we get a whole different set of categories, white, black, yellow, brown, native, and aboriginal, moving to the South African census in 2001 where we get black, a distinction between black African and colored, Indian, Asian, and white, and other. So what this means is that you could be black in the U.S., and you could move to South Africa and suddenly uh, uh, be, be classified in this colored category, which has a distinctive uh, 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 meaning. Um, and the same could be true here. You could be black in the U.S., but move to Brazil and actually move into, let's say, the brown category. So these things are fluid both over time and from place to place. All right, so think about these uh, this idea of race as a social construct, understand what it means, um, and then think about these pieces of evidence and how you can see these pieces of evidence in your life to sort of confirm uh, the way that, so, that race is socially constructed. Okay, talk to you guys later.